Good morning, everybody, as we continue the chitas of the day. The holding today is uh, the 8th of Sivan. It's on a, uh, it's a Wednesday, so we are holding in the uh, fourth part of the portion of Nasai, chapter five, verse number 11. May Shalem and God spoke to Moses saying, speak to the Jewish people of Amayta Aleim and tell them, Ish, ish, if any man, his sisters, ishai, if his wife will uh, take, go astray, and he and will deal treach, treach, treacherously with, uh, with, uh, with him. So now she says, what is written above this, is, uh, this subject, before this subject is mentioned, it's written the, uh, the law of... Uh, before the, this law, the law of, of, of a woman who has an affair, it's written the concept of the, you're going to hold with gifts from the Kohen. By then, by your life, the Torah says, if you're going to be cheap on giving the Kohen his truma, then ultimately God says, you're going to have to come to the Kohen with your wife. Why does it say two times ish? Lambda Shamelas Bishtaim, this is going to teach us that she te- it's a double unfaithfulness. She's unfaithful to her husband, and she's unfaithful to God, who's also in the Torah called Ishmachom, a, a man of war. His sister, she Tishta, an interesting word that the Torah uses. Our sages teach adulterers do not commit adultery unless a spirit of stupidity, folly, enters them. Shtus, that comes from the word stupidity. As written here, should go astray. Tishte can also be meant shoite, a fool. As written, one who commits adultery with a woman is devoid of sense, stupid. Simple meaning of this verse is. Should any man's wife go astray, she, div- she diverts from the, mo- from the modest ways, thus arousing his suspicion as the verse turns away from the sh- uh, shaita, sh- shite from, the, from its past. Mo, mo. What is the treachery? What's the, 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 uh, the sin that she did? We're not talking about she just had a coffee with, a, with another man. We're talking about the shock of it, there was a, there was a, there was an actual uh, uh, a deed or question if there was a deed that happened that they had a physical relationship. Verse 13, Ish and a man will lie with her. and they had a carnal relationship. The Nelamani Isha, and it was hidden from her husband's eye. She hid. Benistara, she hid away. Behinitma. And she became defiled. The eight Aimba, but there's no witness to the story. He learned it and she was not cat, nobody caught her in the act, so to say. So first it asked Shachav Ish, it has to be a man. She can't have a relationship with a child. A child in the Torah is under 13 years old. Sheikh Zera, what's a we're talking about intercourse. <clears throat> Uh, we're talking about a male, that says it can't be a female. Um, it can't have that she had a, 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 a lesbian relationship is not considered in the Torah a, uh, a, 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 a act of, 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 uh, of uh, an act of infidelity. But now I'm in any issue, if, so we're talking about that she says that the husband cannot be blind in this law. The husband has to be somebody who can see. And if he could see, let's say you have a husband that can see, but let's say he's himself an immoral person, he doesn't care, then it would not work either. We're talking about when the husband is not himself not so holy. Well, I'm sorry, we're talking about if the husband is holy, but if the husband is not holy himself, he's not a such a holy person playing around like his wife is playing around, then it's not gonna have this this law does not account, does not go. I don't believe that this law of Saita was ever, ever recorded to have happened in the Torah, in, in history. In Istra, and she secluded herself with this other man, 
And she says that needs to be the time of seclusion. Seven minutes they were hiding together in a, in a, in a, in a, in a room. Eid Eimba, there's no witness. So that says this to Gemara tells us that if there's even one witness that this won't work. Usually you have to have interred two witnesses for, 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 for testimony, but over here, it will stop her from drinking as a Torah. You'll soon see what she has to do. It will stop her from this law if there was one witness, even one witness there. The eight Eimba, there's no witnesses to the impurity, but there were witnesses to her hiding. That means you have to have two witnesses that come forward and say, oh, they went into a private building, the private house together. But that there was no witness. Now, if you have even one witness that saw them having a relationship, physical relationship, then it would then she doesn't, this law does not account. Verse 14, and a spirit of jealousy will fall upon him because he doesn't know if anything happened. There's no witnesses to the actual story. There's a witness to them having a rendezvous, but there's no witness to actual that there was a sexual relationship. So there'll be jealousy, bring jealousy into this relationship. I have a little talk, you know, could possibly that he, he got jealous, the kinesis, and he was jealous of his wife that he's having a, a this rendezvous with this other man. He learned it, but she never became impure. She's a pure woman. She never 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 did anything wrong. Nothing wrong having <clears throat> coming, meeting somebody else in life. But if there's a jealousy. That's when you have a problem. Ruach Kinnara, she says, I was saying to explain that has to be that there has to be it has to be you have to have a relationship with your wife. Person has to have a relationship with you to tell her I'm not in, I don't want this. I don't want this kind of a situation. If you didn't tell her that, then there's not this won't either work. So we're talking about a situation where the person tells his wife, I I I'm not happy with this. Verse 15, the Hevi then the man brings his wife, because this is a questionable situation. He's doubting her, she's saying nothing happened. So they come to the Koi, to the base of English. Behavior is Kabona Lara Sidisef, and she has to bring a carbon one tenth of a of barley flour. Um, barley flour. You don't put upon an oil, little avoid don't put on any frankincense. Kimil Chaskinis, because this is a meal offering. This offering, meal offering of jealousy. Minchas ikarin, it's a offering of remembrance. Maskeras oven, this this reminds us of sin. This is an offering of sin. So now she says that over here she brought not a flower, she brought a barley. So why did she bring? Why did she bring over here the offering of barley? Because she did an act of an animal. They, this is an animalistic act. And therefore, we, we bring the flour from a barley, which is the food of an animal, food for animals. You tell a shaman, you don't put upon it oil. Why? Because shaman is called light. And she did it in the dark. You don't put it on, on levoina, because this is, frankly, it smells, it smells beautiful. The ways of the righteous smell beautiful. And she did an act that's not so beautiful. And um, so that's the way it seems to arouse against her two jealousies, expression of wrath, the wrath of the God and the wrath of her husband. And she shall bring her forth and present her before the Lord. The Koyin takes holy water from the temple. He puts it in an earthen vessel. When the offering then takes from the earth, Mikshion, and that's on the floor of the Mishkan, from the earth of the Mishkan. Yika Hakoyim, when Nasli takes it, he takes an earthen vessel, he puts water in it, he puts some earth in this vessel. So that she says, he takes, which is sanctified in the way in the wash bin. He takes from the wash bin of the base of Mikdash. That was made from the, from, as we told in, in the book of Genesis, I'm sorry, the book of Exodus. That it was made from the, it was covered with the with the with the with the mirrors of the of the women of the slime. So they they beautify themselves for their husbands. And she did the opposite. She beautified herself for somebody else. The flea polish in a earthen vessel, because she used to give her, so to say, questionable lover, she gave him beautiful dishes, 
So over here, we get, ask her to put the water and the, the earth, we ask the coin to put the water in the earth in a earthen, simple clay vessel. Verse 8. And the coin shall stand the woman before the Lord. And exposes the hair of the woman. And shall place her in her hands and remembers and he puts it on, he puts the offering in her hands. As Minchas, like as a cotton, this remembering offering. Minchas Kinais, he, this is a male offering of jealousy. And the Yada coin, and in the hand of the coin is the water. Now, this was the Gemara says this was all done. So we wanted, if God forbid she did have a relationship, we want to confess. Because that would be the best thing. Because if she doesn't confess and she drinks the water, as the Torah would tell us, it had a very bad uh, uh, consequence, very bad ending. But if she confessed, then she was, uh, she, it was done. She was walked away. So we wanted her that if she did do this sin, that she would confess. And therefore, everything was done to this. They brought the car in, and they had this whole emotional situation that hopefully she said, okay, you know what, I, I did it. I'm sorry, I apologize, and I did the sin, and we would let her out, we would let her free. We don't want her to drink this water if she, God forbid, did sin. So that she says, you see, that says he was already said the present that they, they, that they came before the tenth of meeting. However, they would move her around, they would move from one place to another place. So she would ag- become agitated and she would say, she would confess, you get nervous when all these, you know, all these, all this, what's happening, the made some Mikdash. So she would reveal herself. He unraveled the, pla- the plates over here to humiliate her. We were trying to frighten her again, all because we wanted. That she would say, I did it. Now Hashem, so now she says, this was in the Shai Nikonor, the eastern gate of the temple, which everybody enters. Also, so he brought her in public. Nasa Kaper, he put her, he, put, he gave her, the, he asked her to hold all this, all this, all this stuff. So she become again, she would come agitated. Hopefully, she would confess. And why was it called bitter water? Shame safe on this is because of their effects. It was bitter because ultimately, God forbid, if she did sin, this would be very bitter. She would have a bitter, bitter uh, side effect, as you'll soon see in the Torah. Then would make her vow, verse 19. And he would tell the, wo- the woman, if Say, if no man has lain with you, and you have not gone astray and become defiled to another in the place of your husband, you can be free from this cursed water. Verse 20, but if you have gone astray, to have slept with another woman, Yite, not another man, sorry, Yite ish bach, and you let another man sleep with you beside your husband. Verse 20, and the Kayu made the woman vow in these vows. The woman, the man would say, the, the Kayu would say to the woman, Yita Shabbat Yisrael Allah, may the Lord make you for a curse. Moshvua and to the oath, to say Amir between your people, to take Hashem as Yerkov when the Lord causes your thigh, and they fell as Betitchatzav and your belly will swell. Ooh, that was the that was the outcome if she did have that sin. And Hashem's oath of Kol Yitoshem Laolav, Kiyuk Akolim the Kalimbech. Everyone would use your name as a curse, and you would become a known figure. In a negative way, oh, look what happened to this woman. That everyone would swear by you. I am not, uh, I'm not speaking, I'm not like that person may happen to me, it happened to so and so. So this was uh, that they would know you for a negative thing. And the curse, the thigh preceded the belly because he began the sin with the thigh and ultimately to her stomach. 
It's first water will come into the will come into your innards. It's very button. Swell the, the, the belly will your stomach will swell. Nilpa yerach and your thigh will rupture. Vamra isha amen amen. The woman would say yes, yes, amen amen. She would say amen. That's true. On both of these curses. Verse twenty three. And then the Kohen writes these curses on a scroll. And he puts the scroll and he, he puts it into this water. Let's the ink become, go into the water. Verse 24, and he gives this water to this woman. And the water, the, the curse bearing waters come into the, into the woman and it became bitter. Verse 25, and then the woman, the Kayin takes the meal offering, this jealous meal offering, and it's a mincha of Hashem, and he uplifts the mincha before God, and he brings it upon the Mizbeach. Rashi says, again, the is the waving, going fro and up and down, and she would wave it, and he would, with the Kayin, and they would lift up this mincha. Verse 26. Ask it also, and then the kayim, the, the kayim, before he brings it up, he takes a scoop of the meal offering. He hicked on his beach, and, he, and he, he, he lets, he takes that scoop that he takes with his hand, he lets it burn out of his beach. And then he gives it, first he has to bring, give the mincha, bring the mincha. And then he brings the offering. Verse 27. Then he gives it to drink. Verse 27. He shall make her drink the water. And if she became impure, then the water, the bitter water comes into her. The Torah is telling us what actually happened. It would, it would, the belly would swell. Her thigh would rapture. And this woman would be a curse amongst the nations. And as she says, you make a drink to water. Petitioner's statement is to meant to include that if she says, I refuse to drink at the skull, which is God's name written and has erased in the water too late already, she has to drink. Once the, the, the skull has been put into the water, she has no choice. So you got to drink it. So a bit now, although in reference to curse, the thigh is mentioned first, the water test of the body only in the order as it enters, which is the first of belly, ultimately, and then the side, the side. The Meket of Amra, this is the difference between a person who is disgraced in a place where a known person who is disgraced in a place where he is unknown. Verse 28, The Chaisa let's say the, the woman was never sent. Next of an Issa Not only she will, um, nothing will happen to her. Actually, she will, she will bear fruits. She'll have children. Ah, she said, She's a pure woman. From the dire effects of the cursing being water, mortal shall bear seed. If she used to have painful births, she will have easy births. If she used to give birth to the dark, she would give it the fair, she would have beautiful children physically and spiritually. So that's why it says the Gemara says that the, the Khanas threaten God that if you're not going to give me children, I'm going to go and do this uh, this this thing. I'm doing a site that's going to force you to give me children. So this is a, again, I don't know if any it was if there was ever a, a, in history recorded the 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 store the mitzvah of a site that anybody was ever. In history. Verse 29. Zay says, I can these are laws of jealousy when a woman goes astray and some other to some other than a husband, and she is a father. Or a man, a spirit of jealousy that comes over a man, and he will be jealous of his wife. And he will present the woman before the Lord. 
And the, the Kayin will do all what is mentioned before. The man shall be free of his iniquities, and the woman shall bear her iniquities. What does that mean? The man shall be absolved of his iniquities if the water tested him. He should not become distressed and say, I'm, I am responsible for her death. He's exempt from any punishment because it was her sin, not his. Not to be, when he made, once he made a drink, she became permitted to him and free from sin. For a woman under suspicion is forbidden to her husband. And if you have a person has, that's why some people tell us, some of us say this whole law is to tell you how much you have to have a deep relationship with each other. Man and woman should have a deep relationship with each other. They should be trusting with each other. There should be no jealousy between them. There should be no questions of the relationship. There should be a total trust and a commitment between a husband and wife. And no one moment of disrespect and, and, and fear that your, that, that your spouse is doing something wrong. Chapter 6. Verse number one, Dabba Shalom Meisha, and God spoke to Meisha, Dabba and Israel, speak to the Jewish people. Might tell Lehem and tell them, Ish, a Isha, a man or a woman, Yaf, Linde, Nadir, Nazir, they can make a vow of Nazirite, Lahazel Hashem, to become a Nazirite to God. And now she says, Lom, Nech, the Pasha, Ned, Nazir, the Pasha, Saita. Why did the Torah put the law of, of, a, of a Nazirite to the law of a Saita, the law of an unfaithful wife? Or it says, let me just call it in the site of Bikolase. Whoever sees adultery, if people realize adultery, that what's happening around them is adultery, they should realize that adultery comes from drinking. And drinking brings to un immorality. And that's why Yazati made they should separate themselves from wine. If you have a problem in life and you become you're promiscuous, you're not so careful. Stick away from drinking, and you should become a Nazarite. They need the Nazir, so you separate from wine. Whether it's your man or woman, they be, you can become a Nazir, and that's separate. A Nazir, a Nazarite, is not allowed to have anymore. So that's what next for the verse. He shall abstain from new wine or aged wine. He shall not drink even vinegar made from new wine or aged wine. He should not even drink anything which grapes have been steeped. He should stick away from it. This is the concept of, of the self-control. A person has a problem, can't control his mashka, can't control his wine. He has to make a vow. That's what a vow, to make a Nazareth vow. And now he's not allowed to drink any wine. And any kind of wine. Verse 24. And the entire duration of his abstinence, he's not allowed to eat any product of the grapevine from the seeds or skins. Whether it's from the seeds or skins, he's not allowed to touch it. He has to go to the, what do they call the AMA meetings and uh, not touch any wine. Verse 5. And then number 2 is, He's a uh, nausea, just not just controlling on liquor, wine, but so so if he's a nausea, he's not a cut as here. The Yavari, she's not a cut, he's not a cut as here. Adam Lake's Yamash Yazala, as as long as he made a, a vow of to become a Nazarite, he's not a cut as here either. Gadal Parasarisha, he has to let the hair grow on his head. On, on, Call you may, verse number six. Call you may, Zil Hashem, Al Nefesh, the Mace, the Yave, knows number three. He's not allowed, he comes like a coin. He's not allowed to come to the touch, to come near the dead. He's not allowed to be in contact with the dead. The only people that he's allowed to become the impure to the dead, love him to his father, Limoy to his mother, Laochif to his brother, or Lachis to his sister. La Yitam Alehem, to not defy himself to die. I'm sorry, he's not allowed, I'm sorry, the opposite. He's not allowed to even become pure to his father, his mother, his brother, his sister. As long as he is a Nazarite. A Nazarite, there were certain Nazarites, like uh, Samson was a, a, a lifelong Nazarite. But most Nazarites, in the Torah, it depends how long you want to be. They can make a vow, I'm going to be a Nazarite for a month, a Nazarite for a year. 
Okay, but you can decide when you make the vow to become a Nazir, a Nazirite, how long you want to be a Nazirite. But there were certain ones that were, as I said, like Samson, who was a, a, a lifelong Nazirite. He was not allowed to have any of these things his whole life. Call him in the kid to Hashem. So now she says, there refers to the sanctification of the body and contamination of the dead. Verse 9. If somebody in his presence dies unexpectedly, suddenly he's, 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 in, a, he's in a room and somebody dies. It now becomes impure. He's in the room. Can't help it. The guy died before he had a chance to get out of the room. So now it becomes impure. So now it causes the guy that's even defiled. The gear he has to go through, he has to shave his, he has to take off his hair, he has to break his, his Nazarite. He has to, on the seventh day, he has to shave off his hair. And Asher, this is an unavoidable occurrence. That's number one. Pisaim, Pesa is unavoidable. Pisaim is a shayi. And a, and, and a Pisaim suddenly is refers to a unintentional. Some to the word Pesa, Pisaim are a single phrase donating one idea, namely a sudden accident. <laughs> Talk about it in the room that he's in. Yem Tarase, as we'll soon learn, the laws of, of a Nazarite. This is part of it. On the day of he's sprinkled, or perhaps on the eighth day when he becomes completely clean, therefore, scriptures say that on the seventh day. But on, this, but on the seventh day, one might think that his head must be shaved even if he's not sprinkled. So scripture said a day of his purification. So the day of his purification is the seventh day. If a person becomes defiled of a dead, he has to wait seven days. And then on nausea, at the eighth day, the seventh day, he would shave off all his, all his, all his, all his hair. By Yeh Mashmin on the eighth day, Yavish Teh 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 whether it's, he didn't break it intentionally, he broke unintentionally, but ultimately his vow was broken. And therefore he has to bring a sacrifice. Two turtles, two young pigeons, to the coin and the entrance of the tent he has to bring to the base of Midash. We'll make one in a verse 11, one in a carbon a sin offering, one a, a, a burn offering, the chipra of a shechata, a nefesh, and they'll come to give us forgiveness that he sinned on the dead. The Kiddush Shaday should be able to sanctify his head on that day. What well, was the sin? Ultimately, he wasn't careful that he was, he got, he got, the, he got, the, he got stuck with a dead person and made him impure. Number two, Abelez Akfar says he afflicted. What was the sin that he did? Not that he gave him impure, because that was unintentional. The sin was that he that he decided to go away from wine, and and it took away himself away from the from the, from the pleasure that the God gave to the world to wine because he couldn't control himself, so that's why he became a Nazi. He became a Nazarite not to drink any wine. He should have controlled himself and be able to drink wine, but he couldn't control himself. That's the sin that he did. Verse twelve. He is a and he shall consecrate to the Lord the period of. Of his, of his abstinence, the heavy kevis, and he'll bring a lamb, the first year of a guilt offering. The first days fall off. So he has to start again. Let the guy said, I'm going to be another for a year. And then in the middle, suddenly he broke his days. He has to become pure. And now he has to start the year. And the first days fall apart. So you has to, when you make a vow, even though you broke it, you're going to have to keep it, ultimately. So the first days will fall apart, and then you have to keep it. Verse 13. These are the laws of a Nazarite. In the day that it finished the days of his period, of his, of his, Nazar, of his, of his Nazarites, Yavil Pesach HaMoyed, he comes to the tent of me. Now that now we have the law of a guy who finishes the, the, the Nazarite. He said he's gonna be a Nazarite for a year, and he's finished his Nazarite. He's finished a year. He did his year of Nazarite, his vow that he did. 
So now he has to also bring a carbon again. He has to bring a sin offering that it became a Nazarite. It's not a good, totally good thing. So Yavi, now she says, Yavi Isa, you shall bring him, meaning he brings himself. The word Isa himself is one of the three cases in the word S, which Rabbi Ishmael expounded on this, this way. As even similarly by bringing upon yourselves, so Rabbi Ishmael translated, explained that we explained it all the S in the Torah. So he, this is what an oisoi is, brings himself, because William Yavi oisoi, bring, bring, bring himself, every time he has to come in his own free will. Verse 14, here comes Kona Lai and then he has to bring his offering. Kevin's Meshosek Tomim Echalayla, he has to bring a, a, a unblemished lamb of the first year, a burnt offering, sin offering. And Echalayla, the Kafsa Echal Ben Shosek Tomim Lechatos, and one Kevin's for Echatos, Vayel Echal Tomim Lechatos, and one. Ram for a peace offering. Verse 15. Salamat still is Allah's little shaman and a basket of London and cakes. Loaves of fine flour mixed with oil. The kiki matzma shukum a shaman and 11 wafers anointed with oil. Khatam and a skayim and their meal offering and their libations. Verse number 16. And he brings it before the Kayan, and the Kayan will bring it as a sin offering and a, and a meal offering and a, and, a, and a burnt offering. Verse 17. And he shall make a ram for a peace offering to the Lord. Together with the basket of 11 cakes. The Kayan will make to do the service of its meal offering. And it's libation. Actually, he slaughtered the ram of peace offering with the intention of sanctifying the bread with it. And on that day, the Gilach, verse 18, the Gilach and Nazar Pesach El Meis Reish Nizra and the Nazar shall shave his head of his Nazarite at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Allah Hasar Reish Nizra and he takes all the hair. Of the head of his Nazarite, with Nasal Aish, and he places it under the fire, Hashatacha Zeva Hashlamim, that under the peace offering. Now she says, I might think that it's a shave in the courtyard. This is degrading. Do it in the base of Mitos courtyard. Rather, the Nazarite shall shave after the peace offering has been slaughtered. So there used to be a, a special room where they would take the part of the shlamim, which the Nazarite would eat. They would go to this room, and he they would cook the the, the 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 piece of meat in that room, and underneath where they cooked this meat for the Nazarite, it was called the lishkas of the It was called the room for the Nazarites, and they would cook there the food, and underneath the pot that was cooking, they would put the hair underneath the in the fire. So that says under the pot. Which he cooks it. So the Nazarite peace offering was cooked in, in, in the courtyard. It was kind of the room in the courtyard. Since the player had to take the uh, take the foreleg after being cooked and wave it before the Lord. Verse 19. The player shall take the, 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 take the cooked foreleg of the, of the rat. And 111 loaf. Nasal for the basket. And 111 loaf. Nasa kapi ad nazar, he puts it upon the hands uh, of the nazar. Nacha is galach, as nizra if they shave it off. He was in the room over there. The hand of the kain pnufa leviavai, verse twenty, and the kain uplifted it before God. Kain to shula kain, it's holy to the kain. Achaz yat pnufa shikatim up, together with the breast of waving, the thigh of uplifting, which the kain got his own part. And now the Nazir, after this whole service, can go back and drink the wine. Verse 21, this is the law of a Nazarite. Which makes a vow and is offering to his Lord for his Nazarite. In addition to what he has what, uh, uh, within, it, within his means, this is what he has to do. Whatever he is obligated to do. Verse number 22. 
This is the way he shall bless the Jewish school children. And Merlehem tell them. The Merlehem tell them. Yesterday we did Vichas Kadim. Tell them to hear. Emer, Malay, uh, the word Emer is written in full form, indicating they should not bless them hastily or in a hurried manner, but with concentration and with wholeheartedness. May the Lord bless you and watch over you. Your possession shall be this. You should have success. And God watch over you that what? That no thief shall attack you and steal your money. When one gives you his servant a gift, he cannot protect it from all other people. So if robbers came and take it away from him, what benefit does he have from the gift? The Holy One blessed be however. He is the one who gives us and protects us. He gives us gifts of success, money, and then he promises us that he's going to protect. Verse 25. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you. And show favor and find favor. But as she says, may he show you a pleasant, radiant and favor you, may grant you favor. Verse 26. May the Lord raise his countenance toward you. To grant you peace. By suppressing his wrath. Verse 27. And I will, I will bestow my name on the Jewish people. And I will bless them. Rashi said, They shall be blessed with the name, the, the tetragram, the name of God. And I will bless them, the Israelites, and endorse the blessing of the Kehanim. Another interpretation, I will bless them, that is the Kehanim, by them blessing the Jewish people, I will bless them. That ends the Chumash of the day. We now go to the Tanya of the day. And we are holding in chapter one, Shara Yichad Mamuna, second part of the chapter. The Alter Rebbe is talking about how God created the whole world and everything in the world through the letters of the Torah, through the letters, the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The Alter Rebbe says that everything, even a diamond, which falls over here in Evan, an Evan is created through the three letters, Aleph, Beis, Nun. Aleph, Beis, Nun, created is the DNA of an Evan. So if you know what the DNA of a stone is, you would know, and you know the, the, the meaning, the spiritual meaning of the Hebrew alphabet, then you would know how Aleph, Beis, and Nun create this Evan. Now the question is, you're going to look in the Torah, the book of Genesis, and you're gonna and, and you're not gonna find the word heaven in the in the, in the beginning of creation. So how is the stone created when you don't find the word heaven? Even though the name Evan is not mentioned by Sora Master, you're not gonna find the word heaven in the first beginning chapter of Genesis of the creation of the world. You're not gonna find a lot of letters, a lot of names of things. Find the tree, you'll find the earth. But you're not going to find a lot of things that, that God, that, that, that are seemingly not mentioned. But the Altar picks one, Evan. So, so the question is asked how is there stones if you don't find the word Evan? What became Nim Shechai's Levi, Dates, Rufi, Flufiais? Well, if you were a Kabbalist, you would be able to find, because in Hebrew, we have substitutes. There's, uh, there's many ways to, to substitute the words. Whereby an Allah, for example, may take the letter hey, since both letters are articulated by the same organ of speech and so on. So Aleph till hey all come, as we say, that the Hebrew alphabet is divided into the into the way the mouth, the five different ways that it's it's uh, it, it comes through the mouth. Some letters come through the, the breath. Some letters come through the palate of the mouth. Some letters come through the lips. Some letters come through the teeth of the mouth. 
So if we take those letters, you say this goes in this category. So the aleph and the hey, they all come from the from a, from a, from a, from a, they are they articulated the same way. They can be interchanged in the Hebrew. So I'm as galis with the grass on the part of Acha, which has put in two hundred and 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 thirty gates of the way to manipulate, flip. Change as we know, you've got at bash the aleph can change with the shin, and the bays can change with the the, the aleph can change with the, the with the tough, and the bays can change with the shin, etc. etc. So, there's many ways that we can flip these, take these 22 letters, and in Kabbalah, there's 231 gates that we can create different ways of combinations. And as we know in Gemachi also the altar, there's, there's also numerical values to the letters, which also create through the, the aspect of numerical values. So Allah Bay's num, for example, is 53. And that has something to do also that the Evan is, is number 53, that a stone is 53, has a numerical value of 53. So everything has within it in the aspect of the Allah Bay's nun. And then the numerical value of it, et cetera, et cetera. So we can take another letter that has the same numerical value of 53, and it could be an Evan. So even though it's a different word, but since it has the same numerical value as the word Evan, so it is Evan. It's the numerical value as the word Evan. So that is also something in the Torah. So you have all these kinds of ways to do things. And that's why it's a very living, that's why it's called a living language, because it's fashion living. There's so many ways to understand a word and so many ways to manipulate this word and to transport this word and change the word. It's unbelievable. Till through the combinations of the letters, you create... Um, Can I ask a question? Oh, yes, you, you create Nimshach, Mem Tzuf, Hashem, Ever, the, the sends the, from the ten utterance and derives the word stone. So you know, it doesn't say the word Evan, Aleph, Beis, Nun, but if you know how the words are in the Torah, you could find in the beginning of the ten Mamaris the word Evan. Let me just finish it off and, you, and, I, and we can answer. I, I'll ask you all your, answer your question. And so too, all the creations of the world. And it says, explains in the box of it. The Holy Tongue, the Hebrew, the, of the, Hebrew the Hebrew of the Torah, was the language used in creation. Thus, all created things are directly affected by the Hebrew names as well. As, as well as by the components letters of their names. In this, the Holy Tongue is unlike other arbitrary language. The meaning of whose words is result of mere con con uh, consensus. So this is more than the Hebrew language is a living language, and it, and it has many many meanings in it, and many interpretations to it, and has not, it, it has many combinations, and it has even uh, even even gematria. Shame is so, so, so the names of the creature, the creatures in the holy tongue are the very letter of speech which descends degree by degree on the ten utterance of the tongue. And so too, and so too is it by humans. As they say, that, that when a, a, a child is named, he it is given to him Ruch the Kodesh, divine inspiration by God, because his name is the make the makeup of the letters of his name is the makeup of his neshama. And that's why it's important that we make a mission better. We know the Hebrew name. And the, you know, the Hebrew name is important to a person because that's what is the makeup of his neshama. So it's important we know. Everybody knows the Hebrew name. Whether they can see it openly. Like the Altar Rebbe was told to, uh, his parents were told to call Shnei Er Zaman. So the, in the name is ultimately what he was. Shnei Er, two lights that will come to the world. But not everybody can see in their name everything. By means of substitution, transposition of the letters to the 231, 231 gates, 
until they reach a particular created thing and become invested in there by giving it its life. Because the truth is, the descent is necessary because individual creatures are like more pervasive beings, such as the heavens and the earth and the sun and the moon, cannot receive the life force directly from the actual ten utterance. Because that's why the stone is the hardest, and the stone is the, you know, and heaven is not written in the Torah because it's, the, its life force is so minute and so far from its source that, it, that it's not even written the word heaven in the Torah. So the, for the life force issuing directly from, from, for, from them is far greater than, than the capacity of the individual creatures, meaning it's far too intense to serve as its life force. They cannot receive the life force of the soul the, 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 for the rock, only when it descends in progressive diminished degree by degree by means of substitutions of the letters and transpositions of the letters, and that creates this stone. And you have the gematrius and cheshbonosis, that's the numerical value, to be a numerical value that Evan, that the word Evan comes out. Until he can, he can, the life force can be condensed and closed, and a particular creature can be brought forth from it. Yeah, Hashemoy, and this is the name. Hashiyikub Lesha ultimately comes into a name. Aleph, Beis, Nun, Evan. This is ultimately the name. Which the life force ultimately comes into the stone, into this particular stone. But they all come out. Ten utterances recorded in the Torah. So you can know where, where a stone comes from. It's in, the, it's in the days of creation of the world. You can look at that bus and try to figure out how the word heaven is in that verse. And if you know how to figure out the 230, 235, 30, I've got 31 different ways to take the verse and to, to explain the verse in its, in its Hebrew, you know how to do that, you'll be able to find the word heaven. You'll be able to create an heaven, imagine. It's like a, like the like the Maravid Prague created a human being. So you knew how to take the verse of creation of human being and find the DNA of how to create a human being. So the so the so the so the, the Gabar says like Rava created a human being, a, a, a golem, but they the only thing they couldn't create is that he should speak. They can create a human being. But only God can give it the capability to speak. And that's why they created the, 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 the golems that were created were always deaf and dumb. They could not speak. But they could have created this human being. And I said, the Torah and God is one. And therefore, in the actual letters of the Torah, you have what God wanted and how he created this physical world. So if you know the Torah, you can actually create the world. That's what the Torah says. The Torah is the blueprint of the world. Let me just finish with one more second. That ends the time of the day. Today is the eighth day of the month, of the month of Sivan, and the, uh, the, uh, or the, uh, the Tillam of the day starts from chapter 44, and it goes until chapter 48, and you would have done the chitas of the day. Have a beautiful day. Now, what's your question? Okay, now I have two questions. So, uh, but I think I remember Golem is like a robot, right? Golem is like a, not a robot, he's a human being that looks like us, but he doesn't speak. That's what a Golem. Oh. All right. So my other question, and I think I know the answer is, which I never thought about, is that uh, the the number.